Okay, great. Thank you. We sat down at 5.15. It's now four minutes later. And we excitedly reviewing the minutes from the last meeting. Oh, and let's see. Do we have any questions or comments on the minutes? Roxy, you had a question. Yes, what was omitted, revised, and rollback report review? Right, the omitted, revised, and rollback report is a report submitted once a year to the Department of Revenue summarizing the um, any extra warrants that were given that were sent to Jan for collection that you may have been because bills were omitted from the main warrant mm -hmm. for some reason mm -hmm. or the value um, it had to be revised for a reason or if property was taken out of chapter was a rollback tax and we had to oh that's right now i know yes. what you're talking about yep, yep we yep, had yep, to yep. do a warrant for her to collect that rollback yes yep. yep so that was the review basically stating that all those had been done and we didn't have any new ones to take care of mm -hmm. we like that kind of review <laughs> yep anything else no oh you're good except this written mm -hmm. I second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. We'll just all sign one of them. Oh, okay. That, that keeps it a little simpler. Why don't you go ahead well, and sign? I can Roxy keep and... that one. Yeah, sure. That, one. that one's great. Okay. Russ, you sign what's under the round? Okay. So that takes care of item number one on tonight's agenda. Oh, very good. Approved as written. Now, new mail, review new mail, and pay any bills. We do not have any bills. We did get a piece, a new update from the uh, Mass Property Tax Appeal News Alert. Uh, this used to be done by the David Martell office down in Springfield. We used to get them, I think, twice a year or something like that. And I don't know if they've retired or whatever, but Richard Allen, who I think might have worked there, has taken it over and it's basically keeping all the towns updated on what's going on. And of course, of particular interest has been the utilities uh, issues with the um, Western Mass Electric and the power companies versus the towns. The issue being how they're calculated. The as I understand it, construction work in progress, which is CWIP or QIP, is valued differently for their tax purposes, their business tax purposes, than it is for our valuation purposes. And they naturally would prefer the other way than what is done. However, um, Roy has done ours on the basis of what's approved by the state. And I, Feel that we should go ahead with that, but it is important to keep up on these. The motions relating to personal property for fiscal years 2019 to 22, the town of Hopkinton led the case for the state, for the towns of the state. And they sort of said, okay, we'll go with it and see if we can fight the battle for everyone. Mm -hmm. They stated that their assessor, assessors used the 50 50 method to determine value and then add a quip to produce the total assessed value. And Mr. Allen says this, he believes this was the first instance of the ATV hearing a motion of this type regarding utility personal uh, property since the conclusion of the Western Mass Electric versus Springfield case. That ended on June 3rd when the Supreme, Supreme Judicial Court declined the company's petition for further appellate tax review. So it may be that the appraisal methodology is holding up as far as being the 50-50 method. We don't know that definitely yet, but this may indicate that. The second item of interest was the town of Agawam uh, and the question as to whether or not COVID-19 instituted a natural disaster such that business 
the business could claim damages to their real estate because of it. Not because of people were sick, but simply that in this case, the, the abatement, abatement application did not include any facts that the property was, quote, damaged as a result of natural disaster or fire, quote, and also stated that the appeal was late. So that didn't get anywhere at all. But it's interesting that they're making any question about that stick with the absolute bones of the original definition for supplemental assessments. Okay, so that's that. Another nice, interesting piece came in, in um, from the Massachusetts Association of Assessing Officers. They're having a clerk's meeting in Hoyle in, at the end of September. And it's going to be all about exemptions, personal exemptions, which are the ones that we give to seniors, blind veterans, and so on and so forth. And it's going to be an all morning session, including, and will include lunch, Kathleen Caleri, who recently retired as the chief of the Bureau of Local Assessments Law arm, is going to be the speaker. She is terrific, <laughs> and there's nothing she doesn't know about it. She explains it well, and she's terrific with questions. So there's going to be registration and so forth. The program begins at 9.30. And where is this? This down at the Summit View in Hoyle. Um, break in the mid morning, continuation of the review at 1130, questions and answers with a roundtable discussion with Kathleen, and then lunch, at which, which is generally a good opportunity to network with other towns. Mm -hmm. or if you really want to be rough and tough and use your elbows, you can get to be the same table with the speaker. <laughs> but she's pretty available to us. She's now head of the Watertown Board of Assessors, which is where she lives. So, um, we're going to right? Yep, yeah, I'd, I'd absolutely like to see you go at least. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go yeah that'd be good. No, we. We, okay, we. yeah, yeah, yeah. And and when, what was the date? It is Wednesday, September 28th. Okay, okay. well, um, keep it in mind, we'll decide at our next meeting because I think we need to have signed out, signed up by uh, September 28th, huh? Yeah. Actually, no problem. Right. Well, Troy will have to stand in for the barrier. Oh, as long as it can be worked. Yep. Online is registration is available for the 21st. There is a charge for it, but we do have money in our budget for meetings. It's not the full updates of municipal law that we used to go to. No. If that one came through, I'd say, yes, let's all try and go to that, because that is a very good one. Um, Would you not want to go to us? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's see what's going on. Okay. So. We have no new bills at the moment. There's one in that I want to check because it doesn't describe itself very well, and I'd like to find out exactly what period is covered by it. Recent sales. We have a recent sale. Uh, we mentioned at last meeting that the house at 149 Whiteley Road used to be Heather True Love's house and has been the Edwards now for a number of years, was under contract and it has now sold for $580,000. Wow. Only 20,000 more than they were asking. Yeah, only 20,000 more than they were asking. However, our assessed value last year was three hundred and sixteen thousand eight hundred dollars. We did. In, We're off by two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in the past few months. That house was gone through like a whirlwind. Non -per not permit pulling going through, but cosmetically. Well, they went. I mean, they well, the, the, the floors, the walls, the lights. Yeah. The yeah. the children's toilet was replaced with a full size toilet. The you know it was. 
So they were planning to sell it and they redid it. Oh, they, it yeah, oh, they yeah. So they went in and redid it. Yes. Um, so Machiavelli is not in town yet. Mm -hmm. Even though it's been closed on, it's sitting vacant with the front porch light on. Okay. <laughs> okay. Keep an eye on that for us. I will. <laughs> And we will we will call and ask for a visit. That's pretty mm -hmm. steep. That's pretty steep. And they sold it on their own, correct? Yes. For sale by owner. It was on the market a reasonable amount of time. Yeah, I saw that. Well, they had they had a, before they even decided to market it for sale by owner. They had an interest in her. So it's something. And is that, that the party that we know? It? I believe so. So that may or may not be an arm's length sale. But it's still a well. They put it on the market, so they could have got another offer. And they could have. So. They, they, and if it sold for more than was asking, that would indicate that there have been other offers yeah. and one or more other yeah. offers in there. But still, it's a hell of a lot of money. So we'll look yeah. into that one more, and we will be sending out the verification forms to both parties to see what we can find out. And amongst new listings is Malcolm's house. Mm -hmm. has finally gone on the market just this week. Um, it was built in 1969. It's a four bedroom, single bath. Uh, bedrooms and the bath are all on the top level. It's a tri-level. Then living room, kitchen and dining room. Um, what you call the main level. And you go down to the garage level. And there's still another one below that where the laundry is, so forth. Kind of a sunken garage almost. Uh, they've gone through and emptied it all out and basically clean. Um, it does have a hardwired generator to it. It is on, this has three baths. I don't think that's accurate. Is that what they wrote on? That, that is directly off of. As Malcolm said, the problem was mm -hmm. there was no bathroom on the main level and no place to put one, and none downstairs. And the only one was upstairs. That's off of realtor.com. All I did was copy and paste the description. Yeah, I would question that. Right. Hardwood floors in the dining and living room, all the whole That's between living them rooms. and the potential buyer. Right. They mm -hmm. did have many splits. It has two fireplaces. And he also uh, had the place fully insulated about. Six or eight years ago? Oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. The mass save? Yeah, that was a big job. Back deck, two car garage under, plus the freestanding single car to our garage out by the road. Um, it has a, a pleasant view looking across over toward New Wall Road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to see. We currently have it assessed for in 19, in uh, 2022, it was valued at 29. Two ninety nine one. I can read it. So there we have that. How did uh, did they ever get the property straightened out? Is that still a stop? I believe that has never been fully answered. There is a tiny strip of property way up at the north end of the, this piece that it would appear was sold by the seller to two different parties. Ooh. One of whom was Malcolm and was winning. And another, the other of whom was people who bought property across Streets Bridge Road, um, down toward the bridge there. They believe they own it, but it was sold to Malcolm and Winnie a couple of months before it was sold to the other people. Mm. We've told both parties many times over the years that they're going to have to get surveyors on it to sort out the questions. So we're, we're taxing somebody. We're taxing both. Yeah. <gasps> oh, well, we're For that tiny good, little then. piece, that's what the Department of Revenue says. Make them sort it out themselves, and in the meantime, you can tax both. <laughs> <laughs> They're not doing anything to sort out the question. Malcolm, uh -huh. okay. And that $7.30 so is really helping. Isn't, <laughs> isn't that going to be an issue when they sell if it's not? I would certainly feel it was an issue. Is it a separate parcel? Yes. Okay, so maybe he's just selling it back. Just I have saying, no just idea. Just saying to hell with it. Let yeah, it he may just be. Oh, 
selling the parcel. I, I don't that, know. Yeah, that would be one way to deal with it. And I mean, that would be one way to deal with it. I don't know anything for or against how they're going to handle it. But I, as a buyer, I would consider that to be a red flag. And for me, maybe he's not even listing it as for sale, though. Maybe that piece isn't right. It could be just you know. right. So that's uh, 150000 more than. Well, actually, we're that's this year's proposed assessment. The last year it was two ninety nine, so one hundred and seventy five more, which was pretty typical of the way things are going. Yeah, new permits. We have new permits. Yeah, I need to count off a little bit. Split them up like so many. Wow, there you go. Efficient here. Well, the one from Marissa Smith that says one Hoosick Road is actually 16 Hoosick Road. Yes. I had a bit of a problem with the building inspector's office. I send them an update of our map index every time we do one. Uh, no, what is well, that was, on, that was on her. I know, but oftentimes they're using names from four years ago. What is this? What is this? This one is replace an oil boiler. boiler oh, but it was a different with an LP gas system. Yep, yeah. they get they're in different locations depending upon whether they're a gas or a or an electrical or a structural okay. structural permit. You know. <laughs> yeah, I like it now that no, oh, okay, they have that. Big P up in the corner of that one for plumbing, but oh, okay. they don't have the same thing on that one. That we don't know what that is. Maybe they're working toward that direction. That would be great. So we got lots of that rain that we needed. Oh, that's three drops of sit for the rain. I believe it. So this is one whole new house here, not this one. Who's that? Oh, Marissa Smith? Yeah. Yes. No. That's my Alan. That's at the Ryder place. Well, at the Ryder right. house. Yeah. Where which, the Ryder which house lot? was. It's the corner lot. The corner lot. Yes. That's why Alan came in just before the meeting. Yes, with the additional well because the other one got it. Oh, he did. Really? Or it's just about. Or it's just a little bit off. Something deeper. We got down to five feet of water in ours. Yeah. And so we stopped using it for drinking or anything like that. And we're just. It's extremely. Without knowing how deep mine is, I well, that's I it. But no... I think being a drilled well, you're safe. You know. Well, the, it went through a lot of ledge and bedrock, so it's got to be down there for oh, sure to get below that. Yeah. What was yours? A shoveled well? Yeah. I stuck it with the backhoe. <laughs> Drop down tiles, seventeen and a half foot of tiles. Wait a minute, 65 Hoosick Road sold. There wasn't, oh, no. There's no. There was nothing for that. There's no deed for that. Unless it was, when did it sell? Or is that the two brothers? The Stone Brothers? No, no. We, ha settled. we had the Boydens sign over for a no, dollar, and I didn't. When was that? Uh, July 7th. Then it would have been in our previous batch, not this batch. Okay. This is from our last meeting till now. 
We would have done that two meetings. We would have done that two meetings ago. So somebody is building a house on the piece of ground. Oh, that's the other day agenda. Trust me. It's just a single family dwelling. Oh, new home construction. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there is nothing new here. We had seen all of the construction. So this is our monthly report from them. We have seen them all, and we had seen the uh, Barker survey mm -hmm. setting off five acres. This is our mm -hmm. uh, copy of the one as stamped by the Registry of Deeds. Oh. So this is the official. And that's what we go for. We appreciate preliminaries, but they can be changed between then and when they actually get registered. So we prefer to have the, the final. We have one motor vehicle abatement application this time. Mm -hmm. Vehicle was traded in. Very straightforward. This person brought in all the right paperwork immediately. It was wonderful. <laughs> so we sign here on the application, here on the certificate, and here on the summary. And feel free to look it over. I'm signing my phone. Yeah. Well, you could sign somebody else's if you want. No, I mean, I didn't, I'm not just initialing. <laughs> right. This is full name on this one. Yeah. Where did you want me to do this one? Uh, right up in the top there, those little lines down right here. There. Yes, exactly there. Okay. So now we might not see, we won't see any chances of rain until Monday. Who's the realtor? Uh, Tim Packard from Coldwell Banker. He was one of Donnie Malou's um, people, I believe. Students, I should say. Okay, that was good. a year or so ago. It would have been sold already. Oh yes, <laughs> for even more. Yeah. But I wish them. I wish them well. Yeah. Review of chapter applications. We they've started coming in. They were sent out uh, early last week. Mm -hmm. Yep. And they've started coming in already. So we have some that we can go ahead and review and sign off. The start of the influx of about 190. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Between now and October 1st, supposedly. Yep. Uh, these, I think, all happen to be Chapter 61B, the recreation and open space. And I've gone through them briefly. There's very little for these folks to fill out. They have to fill out their identification. Mm -hmm. well, actually, this person did not put in the map. And, Lock, that's okay. This one is complete. And they fill out, you know, how is the land used as you saw? Yeah. Yeah. And they have all filled out their um, acknowledgements. Mm -hmm. So now they are sent a copy of finish one as with their receipt. 
would I send the approval letter? Yeah. I give them a copy of the finished yeah. one for the next time. And ask that they hold it to next year so uh, that they'll have it, all this information so, available. Yeah, so they can use it for reference. Yeah. yeah. But I think that it gets tucked someplace this next <laughs> not for me and for something. Uh, we need to sign these actually down. Oh, we'll vote them as a group. Oh, okay. So we'll vote them as a group and then we will sign them down here. Okay. I should do my little thing here. Ownership. Do you want me to get us, what's the address on the one that's missing? Uh, 1870 Main Bowling Road. I'm just checking off that they have filled in all their qualifying information. It is 415 22. 415 22. 415 Need reference? That's not here. That won't be here. No, it isn't. <laughs> that won't be here. <laughs> so, can you have this? If they post it, can they still qualify? Yes. Okay. Just wondering. It's an unusual feature that you would think you would have to have it open and available, but right. it's because it's supposed to be well not necessarily they just the wants case. it left. Basically, they don't want it. They want it in open and wild natural condition. Right. More than they want. Strangers walking through the property. Yeah, I guess that would be the case. <laughs> and it's posted, but they may allow. Then allow may, people by request, by individual request. Right, but they may allow the schools in, like the agricultural oh, departments at the schools. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. I'll hold that one till next time. Sorry, I missed that. That's all right. And we'll do your application next time too, Roxy. Okay. When we get the acreages sorted out. Mm -hmm. Because she is a new applicant this year for 61B. Yep. I've got a question for you. Okay. Um, the packet I've got. Two copies of one and all of one of this page. What did you put? You trust one in right. he as didn't, well as mine. Oh, he yeah, didn't no, get one for the one. trust. Right. Yeah. You had it. We'll make sure you have plenty. I told him I would give him another blank sheet before he left, but I guess that wasn't an acceptable <laughs> answer. Well, I didn't know. You said Lee was in charge of well, that. Well, I said <laughs> Lee made the mailing list, and all I did was print the labels off it and pop them in the mail. <laughs> And she said Russ was 61, 61A, and 61B. That's why there's three acknowledgments. The trifecta. They're all different. <laughs> if you read them, they're all a little different. Yes, okay. they are. I know. You uh, love that. I said, where's my other front page? <laughs> we do. We have to. Have, yeah. Somebody didn't say that. You're Russ right. Had, I didn't. Yeah. Should have been two labels. Yeah. Yeah. One for the NDF trust. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Yes, that's right. MDF. So I'm going to have to make a line yeah. item for that. Right. Oh, uh, yes. So move to accept those as submitted. Mm -hmm. seem to be in good order. I believe there are five altogether. Mm -hmm. First five down. <laughs> Do I hear a second? I second. Thank you. Any discussion? Okay, we start signing. The nights when we have to do about 30 are tough nights. Yeah. <laughs> so ignore the highlighting part of this. Here's your second page. <laughs> just, oh. no, just ignore <laughs> that. <laughs> Which one is he? This is the NTF trust. Yeah, but what is it? Oh, uh, that's 61 and 61 and A. 61, 61 and 61A. Yeah. 
Fine. Because you have the fields and the forest. Fine. Right. Yeah. Take that one. Give me this one. This is sorry about that. Which one? This one. This one. Mm -hmm. We keep track of these, Roxy, as they come in. We have the, the master list when they're mailed out. Mm -hmm. We keep track of them as they come in. Another column for when they're processed by the board, when the, the acknowledgement is sent out, and if necessary, when they're called to remind them to get it in here. Mm -hmm. yep. We usually remind folks around the 20th of September. And who we return paperwork to and when because they forgot to sign it. Right. <laughs> and try very hard to keep folks on board and on time. Because you can file, if I read correctly, after you get your bill. Is that correct? You're in a revaluation year. Oh, only in that. Only in a revaluation year, which is now every five years. Oh, okay. One, yep, as opposed to the three years that it used to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gross sales don't apply for Chapter 61B. So I can just cross that off completely and it doesn't. Uh -huh. Yeah, because we're not, not selling it. Right, whereas it does, it is a required characteristic for 61A. Yeah. Now, technically, the forest management is a 10 year certification. Mm -hmm. And they, do not, they're not required by law to report within that 10 year period because they're required to prove at the end of the 10 years that they've complied with it or reasonably so, depending on market, weather, so on and so forth. However, we send this out anyway and we try to ask nicely if they'd update us as to how it's going. Have you done anything in the last year that is listed on your plan? Anything like that, just to keep, keep aware and also so that they know that we're trying to stay aware of what's going on. And when you sign up for that particular one, Feral Forest Management Plan, you receive the greatest tax benefit. Um, and therefore it seems right that you would be watched, I mean, you know, check your out mm -hmm. to be sure that you are fulfilling your end of it within a reasonable range. Um, the state forestry office will tell us that, for example, several years of severe drought, like we're having or have had, can well change the crop that normally would have been expected to have been, you know, to yield it around now. In which case they may say, well, wait a minute, what was written in the report 10 years ago or eight years ago became somewhat um, overridden by the weather circumstances or the market. The fact that you can't get anything trucked anywhere, things like that. It was COVID for the past few years. Right. Right. So we keep these things in mind and check with them as needed. So we have a question. There we go. Okay, first five down. Okay, next slide. Report on work done with Roy Bishop. Oh, Roy came to town, and I tell you, it was great. He looked at what we had, he looked at the sales. We went over them. 
And he said, okay, I see where you're ending up. You're ending up around 90%, 92% of your, where you ought to be. And he said, I said, he said where do you want to be? I said, we'd like to be within 97, 98% of fair market value. He said, that's reasonable, yep. He said, what have you been doing to see about getting there? I said, well, I've been looking at land here and buildings there. And he said, that's fine. Let's try the easy way first. And he went ahead and he put, actually there were 88 to 90. He put 8% across the board on everything. An increase of 8% in value. Didn't break it down to whether it was just the first acre or the second, whatever. That's it. And it brought us up to just about 98% of all the sales worked out beautifully. So I believe that's absolutely the way to go. It is easy to explain to people. It makes good sense. It would be, it will also be easy to adjust next year should there be a flattening of the market. In other words, we would make no change or only maybe one or 2%, or if there's a downturn in the market, we'd back that 8% off a little bit. But it gets us up to where we need to be as far as full and fair market value for our fiscal 23 tax values. So when you say 8%, are mm -hmm. you saying 8% on land and the house and everything? Yes. Okay. Yep. So if your land value, for example, was a hundred thousand, it's now a hundred eight. And if yeah, you know, the house was a hundred thousand, it's now a hundred eight. Okay. Yep. Doesn't matter what style, style, anything. Right. It's just all working, and our sales are varied enough that there are reasonable uh, reassurance that it's okay to do it that way. Yes. My question is: You say that. Uh, it brought it up with sales, but with the $250,000 one, 8% on whatever. Oh, I know. Whatever it was doesn't bring it up to $250,000. Well, and we're going back to what the value was on January 1st of this year. We, we're bringing, the 8% is bringing them up to where they sh the values should have been for 1 1 this year to be. Yeah, we had, with we the had market some sales then. last year. We had some sales last up. year. So some of them, that, how, how that? anything now that has chapter land in it gets thrown out by the state. So the hobby sale got thrown out. Really? Yep. Because chapter land has such a varying factor between properties, depending upon how much is in it and which chapter it's in. Mm -hmm. And so they just can, they just disallow properties with chapter value, chapter land in it. So that took care of several of ours. But the chapter land went up to 8%, right? No, the chapter land only, I'm sorry, that's good, 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 thank you. Chapter land is only going to change to what the Farmland Advisory Commission gave it. And in some right. cases, in forestry, I think I've gone down slightly from this, from last year based on the west side of the river. They do forest land and uh, based on whether it's on the east side or the west side of the Quebec River. Uh -huh. The two different, very distinct areas for production and property. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so no, they will go according to that, but everything else, outbuildings. What was according to again, sorry? The Farmland Advisory Commission, the state's Farmland Advisory Commission. They set the rates. Right, they set the rates for chapter lands. And we usually take the medium level as opposed to the low or the high to use for Conway. Yeah. The 61A land, they do by various crops, they might call it field crops, or they'll say hay or pasture or Christmas trees or whatever. But there are several. Various. Yes, 10 various categories. 
and they're reviewed by that group each year based on information and input from all of the state, from the real estate market, from the uh, commodities, mm -hmm. you know, for the different crops grown, every every um, avenue they can they can uh, find. Yeah, the um, so that that went very well. I did feel very much more confident after that, and comfortable in bringing that to the board for approval. Um, we still have another couple of weeks in which to finish up, and I printed out. For example, one category of houses, these are particular interest because they're one and a third story tapes, which happens to be what Roxy's is, but these are all the one and a third story houses we have in town. Oh. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, you know, I'm doing this for all the different categories for us to look over quickly. Okay, let's see what yeah. this is. And he did say, Remember, what we do here is mass appraisal. He said, do not let yourself get caught up in individual appraisal. Well, I think I had been. But what we do is mass appraisal. It's based on sales and it's based on how like properties are valued compared to like properties that have sold. He also finished up our two utility appraisals, New England Power and uh, Western New England, or Eversource, I should say, Eversource and Star. And so those are all set. We have our new growth figure for utilities is complete. Bring it up. We don't have any new second homes in town, in other words, that have been sold to people who only use them for weekends or vacations that we know of. Um, so if anything, that list has shrunk a little more from last year, because a couple of folks have moved into their second homes now as permanent residents, residences. I guess I didn't realize that since I got sold. That what? Old Cricket Hill Road? Net Nelson's what? I haven't seen it. Nelson's didn't sell. I didn't sell it. Well, I heard the other day that some people from California went there. It hasn't closed yet. It wasn't even listed. Maybe true. It might have been listed on Sotheby's or one of those. It doesn't get advertised locally. Or that certainly might, would be or appropriate. Or it just might be someone they know. That could be too. I don't know. Or like it may have I sold but hasn't closed yet. don't like that. I don't know. We'll watch. So is this what you're saying is going to be for 2023? All right. Over here. Yes. The entire property. Uh, now, hang on a minute. This is, this is to compare one and a third story houses. In other words, are these all one of the thirds? We yes. answer yes, we yes. say yes. And I have them sorted by square foot of living area. And we can look at the grade and condition. And we can see the range of values per square foot from 89, 30, 7401. Okay, here's $56.14. That's probably the lowest. Oh, yeah. Per square foot. Mm -hmm. And we have, oh, $168 here. That may be the highest per square foot. What's similar is that they are both one and a third story capes of some variety. 
No, we just had a California thing when we were there. That was on Borton's. Oh, yes, Borton's. They were mm -hmm. in California. So, yeah, San Francisco. People from California, supposedly, yeah, I don't know. Get up on. No, they can't. No, I don't know. I know Carrie should be staying in that. That's, that's supposed to be Carrie's house now. But it might be, who knows? Maybe our choice is, I don't know. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. I'm sad. Oh, that is very sad. Mm -hmm. It's sad. She's she's just been there for so long, and she's such a great neighbor. Yeah, I bet. She's a fabulous neighbor. Well, the new growth in utilities for this year is five million dollars. Five million thirty-two thousand and fourteen dollars, which is great. Uh, once again, of course, N Star Eversource was the big winner, the big contributor of that, with 4.8 million. So that's going to help uh, moderate the tax rate very nicely. Real estate new growth so far is up to 2.7 million. Um, That's not absolutely completely finished yet. Still double checking that. But right now, just new growth alone would account for lowering the tax rate by a good 50 cents on the dollar. And probably the increase in valuations will bring it down another significant amount. So that even though values will be higher, the tax rate will again be coming down. Can't give it the final figures yet, but it uh, one sh should buffer off help to offset the other in a way that'll be helpful for most of us taxpayers. Um, what I would like to see, <clears throat> and I don't know if you can do this, is show the percentage changing from one year to the next. Can, is that possible to connect on the computer system? Yeah, I can't do it tonight, but I'm I can do it tonight. tonight. Yes, yes. But, um, yeah, because I mean, I, I have it for each property. Because I see some go up quite a bit. The percentage well, let's, wise. All right, I'll, let me see what I can do about that. Because that would be interesting, because that would be a quick look at and say, why is this one going up 30% and others aren't? Right. They've yeah. gone down. Right. Because if you're not looking at each one and you're kind of doing it as a group, it would be. It well, it's because we're looking at story and a, story and a thirds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and seeing if our, our uh, conditions and grades are uniform, not so much what the figure is physical, at the end. Physical condition. Right. So. Uh, in condition, the higher the number, the poorer the condition. Pardon me? In condition, yeah. physical condition, yeah. five is average. Yeah. Numbers above that are in poorer condition. Numbers one to five are in better condition. Right, right. The lower the number, the better condition. Yes. Now, we did also want to look at the Patriot demonstration tonight. It's about 15 minutes. And I didn't get a whole lot out of it. I was going to say that demonstration was. It was somewhat disappointing. And I, really... I ended up with many more questions than answers. Yeah, it did. Um, It was a very glossed overview. It didn't really tell about how they, it's it's a totally new look than it was when I we last used it. Uh, not a bad thing. 
and it uh, didn't answer a lot of the questions I no, would have as an it's operator. It's just a very basic, you know? Yes. Very basic. It does this, it does this, and it does this. Well, they all do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I do think that as we are approaching filing our preliminary values on the 1st of September or the 2nd, um, I would like to schedule meetings for each of the next two weeks. We might not have a whole lot to do with and leave very early on uh, next week, but I'd rather do that than not have a meeting in place. Should we, should we need, that's 24th. And the 31st. I won't, <clears throat> I won't be here the 31st. So. You won't? No. Okay. Will you be back later in the week on Thursday or Friday? No, we're leaving on the 28th. Oh, you are? And we're going to be gone for two weeks. Oh, okay. Well, I thought you were leaving after that. Well, well it, <laughs> it's changed around a little bit. That's okay. We have to have a month. It depends when my help leaves. Right. So I have to make sure the help is going to be there. And yeah. The change will not. So. Um, we don't. Let's see, what do we have to sign for the preliminary values? At least two of us have to sign the preliminary preliminary values to send them in. So we're okay there. If you're going to be around, as far yeah. as you know, I, I'm going to be around the next two weeks. So okay. Um, we have the right number of people. Well, um, all right, let's see how that goes. But I have, I have questions and just because I'm trying to understand all these charts and I, you printed out some charts for me the other day or I put, I took those and I went over them and I'm, I'm questioning, I'm looking at this and I'm not quite understanding compared to these others. That I have. I mean, it takes a while to look them over and understand them all. But which which charts are these? Actually, this is this is well, done a lot of them over the years. Okay, this was the different groupings. This is yes, this is the one. Some you of the group. different groupings, right? Yes. Camps and so forth. Yep. Right. And just because we're going to talk about my house later, mm -hmm. later, um, I was looking at that and I don't understand how some of these have the basic R, C, L, whatever you call them. Replacement cost, due list depreciation, R, C, L, and D. Yep. How come some of them are the more, some of them are less? And I guess that has to do with the percentage of good and completion. Yes, it has to do with the age, the condition, mm -hmm. the features, of each property, number of bathrooms. I mean, because I'm looking at some, some are way off that I don't understand. Why. It might be you know, maybe a number of bathrooms. It could be a number of things. So I, so they're putting that in there or it comes up in the computer, right? Replacement plus new less depreciation is based on the description of the building. Right. So including is, its physical age, its effective age, its condition, mm -hmm. its number of stories, its type of heating system, its type of basement, um, uh, the number of beds and well, number of bathrooms and fixtures, uh, all of those things, whether it has extra things like fireplaces or mini splits, mm -hmm. um, all of that but gets that included in there. But that should give you this replacement value, correct? It's replacement value, new, less depreciation. Right. Yes. But so when you go over to, what would that column be? I don't have it. That would be for the 2022 replacement yeah. value. Yeah. And this one is basic replacement. 
how come some of them are way off and some of them are not? If this is what it's supposed to be replacement value, right? After depreciation, right. Replacement cost new, right? I got the replacement value and it's all what it costs. Replacement cost new, RCN. Okay, just RCN is what would it take to build that exact house with the exact same features brand new today? Okay. Replacement plus new list depreciation is what's that house worth as it is based on its condition today? Okay. So this one is, in other words, the wear and tear, it takes off the wear and tear. Okay. So this one is replacement value. For right. Today. That's the brand new cost to replace that. Okay. Right. And so why are some of them the exact price on that when you come over to, to this and some of them because of wear and tear or good thing is. Well, not. this is replacement cost is 30,000 plus. Mm -hmm. The billable is 10,000 plus because it's very old and in poor condition. Right. Well, those are camps. I got okay, that. Right. But, I'm camps, but, but that's yes. what I'm going by is like here. I have to file because I didn't have all this here. So. Let's look at one that I have a question on. Um, here's one. Let me see. It says the replacement value is 365,000. Yeah. And then it comes over here, and then the value is 385. Well, the Replacement cost new, that, that is its new taxable is value. 365. All right, it's taxable value. Right, has I to do is, is coordinating with the sales. Okay. And its value for sales as a sale right now is more than it would cost to build it. Significantly, of course. So why is it over here where it should have some depreciation higher? Can I see the headings again? Yeah, yeah that's what I'm, I'm trying to do yeah, it too. Okay, let's put it on top like this. There, here it is. Okay, so we're here on this one. Yeah. Base replacing cost new. Okay. Because our sandwich complete 95. Mm hmm. I would guess that something has been added to it within a year, perhaps. I'd have to look into it. Is that particular property. Because that's quite a bit of quite a bit change. Right. right. Now, whose is that? Let's see. Uh, so that's okay. Campbell, uh -huh. Jared Campbell. Uh -huh. I don't know. Did anything change on his house? I don't know. I'll look back in the permits. We'll have to look back in permits and stuff. But Volvo on my street. Now the replacement cost on that one is 172. Who? Oh, Brogo? Yeah. Brogo. Okay. Yeah. And it's up to 206. 206. Now it should have some depreciation on it. So I'm just questioning how I'm sure it has it. that the, the cost factors have had to go up. The cost factors, the dollars per square foot for each feature, have had to go up to keep pace with the the market values. All right, and, and, that's, and that's fine. That's the and, basic, and, and the that's explanation fine. for both of those. Okay, I'm, that's fine. But yep. then, then when I'm seeing this one, this one has gone down. Okay, which one is that? Two I'm third one here, lights. No, that it says the replacement value is two sixteen. Yeah, two hundred sixteen. And you have it, we have it here over here at 208, which makes sense because it's got depreciation. Right. So I get that. But when it's going up quite a bit, it's like. When? This year. Uh, yeah, but this is for 2022. Yeah. This, this isn't 2022. 
That was in 2000? Yes. Yeah, so yeah, for 2000. $2, yeah. earlier this year. Oh, okay. So there was some new growth there. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, but I'm looking at this and it's like 178. Who's this list here? Fala. So the replacement of that one is 178. Mm -hmm. And it's 91% good, 100%, and it's 166. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Doesn't add anything done or added to it. Um, off the top of my head, I don't think of and, anything. And that's, that's rated unusual. It's, it's under good condition. I mean, um, what would that be? Overall condition is good. So it's gone down compared yeah. to that one. Okay, that's good. So I think I'm giving you reasons why these changes happen. Well, no, you didn't give me that reason why that one's gone down. Well, not individually, but as a group or, you know, as units within a larger group, they go, if it's staying in good condition, mm -hmm. for example, because of the increase in market values, a house is going to go up more than how am I trying to say this was than a corresponding if if it just if it just absolutely stayed the same one year to the next we would get that say eight percent if it had a little bit of depreciation on it it wouldn't get the full eight percent um uh, I get I, I I'm understanding it. this so. This is the replacement value. And then there's supposed to be depreciation on it, correct? Yes. So why is it going up if there's not adding the depreciation on it? It's not putting the depreciation on it. It must be putting depreciation on it. Depreciation is included in the uh, dollar per square foot. Can you say there's <laughs> We're getting our breakfast here. Thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. I'm not even putting this away. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear the damn chocolate. Oh, there's a Cadbury factory in Toronto. <laughs> Thankfully, they did not have factory tours. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I always loved the Ben and Jerry store. Oh, yeah. And so. <laughs> <laughs> we had taken the Cadbury tour in England years ago, and it ended up being an expensive stop. <laughs> so I still don't quite understand how this can change. I really would like to understand this. You understand it? Well, I can. I know how they go up and down, but I and trying to put I it into words. It to you, no, I can't. Well, if this is the replacement value, if this is the replacement value, which is supposed to be to replace a house, right? To build it brand new again today. Right. Exactly with its exact same features that it has. Okay. So today, if I built the house. Yes. And, and it's the, the computer is saying with what's in there, it's going to cost 178000 Okay. Yeah. So this one seems right because... With depreciation, mm -hmm. it's gone down to 166. Yeah. Does that, that make sense? Seems reasonable. Yeah. So it's got a. That's a 40 year old. Oh, God. No, that's older than mine. That's almost 60 years old. What is that house? Okay. So, yes, it has. It's been well cared for. Right. So, yeah. but it's gone down. Yeah. So, mine to replace it, it says if it's brand new today, it's mm -hmm. 125. And it's supposed to be average, and it's I'm being assessed at 127, so no depreciation. I'm de I'm just can reading you, the charts. And can I'm you just come in? Can you come in tomorrow or Friday for a little while? We can go over these in, in particular. I. What's tomorrow? No, I can't. I, I've okay. got to get ready. I'm doing a show this weekend. Oh, I just mm -hmm. can't. I'm setting up Friday. And right. I just don't have the time next two days. Okay. 
But well, I have some time early next week. If you might next week, I can. Okay. Why don't we? Why don't we do that? Well, but, and I, then I can look into them individually and see what else is affecting them, if anything else is. I mean, one of the things I am reminded of in, in going back to mass appraisal as opposed to individual. And I understand that you, you do it, but so they should all, everyone should have some kind of a depreciation. They that. all probably have, but in varying degrees based on the condition. Well, no, I just showed the house you. that's just been redone, like the house on Whiteley Road here. Based on it's the information that we've just had, if that brought it back up to its brand new condition at the time of its sale, it would have had almost no depreciation. Well, that's a new sale, but we are even being though, assessed. Even though it's a 12 or 15, 12 year old house, probably. Yeah, all of that. 14, I believe. Yeah, 14. I understand that, but you don't have it assessed for that amount. And that's what I'm saying. We just looked at it. It was not assessed for that amount. No. So no, that's it? what we're doing is going by what we're assessing them at. And that's my question. Why are we assessing some for more than what it replacement costs today? And because we're assessing, we're assessing them at their market value, not the replacement. More there, are three approaches to, there are three approaches to value. Yeah, cost more to buy them than does build them. There are three approaches to value. And that would be, the I market. understand that, but it, that would be fine if they're all above because sales went up, but they're not. Some of them are down because of depreciation and some of them are up. So how can you say because of sales, they're going up? And it just doesn't make sense to me. And I'm all We're about an extraordinary market right now. No, no, it's a, we're an extraordinary market right now. We know that. Therefore, sales are going up. Yes. The uh, we have not been able to get out and look at houses properly in well over two years. We just about close to, and we're going to get start that up again as soon as we get through billing. And in some cases, we may find that our data needs to be corrected one way or another, depending upon what's accurate. Some of the houses that sold within that period may have had work done that we're not aware of. Some um, were using our best information here and coming up with values that are holding up under the mass appraisal and that's no. fine because I'm looking at another one here. It says to replace the house as what they have listed. Right. What do you think? 132,000. You've got to assess for 119. Yeah. Which is fine. I mean, not a problem. Yeah. But when mine is replacement value at 125 and I'm assessed at 127. Good heavens. <laughs> what do you mean, good heavens? That's, that's barely over 1% difference. But it's higher than what replacement value is. Barely over one percent is is but negligible in any statistical analysis. I know, I get it. But when I'm looking at somebody else being replacement value is one thirty two, and the, they, the sales and they only are being assessed for one nineteen, that's lower. As we get back to mass appraisal and away from individual appraisal, which is real estate or banking. We're finding that the cost approach is one of the three methods used. Now, for residential analysis, the income approach is not appropriate, obviously, uh, because so few houses are rented. That's good for apartments and things like that. Yeah, I thought I heard the door. But at any rate, the Values that we have there mm -hmm. will or will not hold up against the mass appraisal values. If they don't, 
if a grouping, for example, has too wide a spread, we'll have to look at that. Well, when, do, when are we going to look at that? Because you're, we're coming out with values. We're going to be doing yes. bills. So when are we going to look at that and check it out? I just printed out this one little grouping tonight to start with. And I'm printing out more in the next couple of days, hopefully, that we can look at and bring them back here if necessary. Uh, it'd be great if we get together in between times and then just bring back our ideas and recommendations for vote. Hmm? Well, I mean, it's just like some are up, some are down. And if that's we're going always to, the case. But if we're going across the board, that's how you get an average. Some of them are up, some of them are down. And that's. But why is that? Why are why are, are they assessed? Because it should have depreciation. They should be a little lower than a replacement cost right today. Correct? No. no. Why? Oh no. Because the sale price sometimes is greater than the replacement price. Yes. If they've done because work the market to it. Is, yeah, but what if you haven't done anything? The market still is shoving these prices way up sky high. And that's fine. If the replacement value on all of these are above that. That makes sense. But if some of them are lower, why? But depending upon whether a house is new, what condition it's in, those make a difference too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you're kind of not applying those exact characteristics to each one of these individually. You're not, well, let's, let's hold off there because we really have to keep moving. Because we do have well, I mean, we're we're supposed to be making some decisions on this, and I'm just trying to understand it and 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 learn how this is done, and I'm not quite getting. I'm trying. I, I do wish the Department of Revenue still taught their course. It was a <laughs> because I see some way down. I mean, I'm looking at the property cards, and they don't even match what's on here. That's what I'm questioning. Property cards number are don't match. Old property card numbers probably won't match. 2022 should match this. For replacement costs, new generally, uh, yeah, generally speaking, yes. Unless we found a change in a house. Mm -hmm. Well, when's the last time you've been to Lee's house? Well, it's been no. several years, but well, you've been up. Yeah. So last summer? Oh, the year before. Oh, yeah, that's true. It's long before COVID. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. Last three bill. You and Malcolm both came up. So I mean, I just I'm just questioning everything as to what's happening. I mean, I'm looking at yours and it's like Yours doesn't even match this one. And that maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm not reading it right. Maybe I'm totally wrong about what I'm doing, which is why I'm questioning because I'd like to really understand what is how this is done. Because um, huh? on yours, I'm right. looking at yours because you okay. can do yours. So it's saying, where's yours? Right here. So for 22, which is part 22, it says the RNCLD is 170. Mm -hmm. Replacement cost, new less depreciation. Yep. Yeah. On here, you have it in 182. And you have it over here as being assessed at 170, right? So that just, that's what it means. We need something to go by. Yeah, there's one of those headings again. There we go. Okay. Oops, that's not right. Well, this looks like replacement cost new, yes, 182, 997. Yeah, and then 
Your assessment yeah, is one yes. seven. It's only 75% complete. Mine isn't 100% complete. Okay. Um, so you're saying you're being assessed at 170. Is that what yes. it says? Well, how come on your property card it only says 141? The building's totaling. You're saying here the house was listed at 128,250 for this. Mm -hmm. And you had to deduct that, so your house is being listed at 128, or that's what the assessment is. Buildings total of 141 two. So that would have been 70%, 75% off. Mm -hmm. The replacement cost new after depreciation. Well, 170 is certainly a great deal more than 75% of 182. And that's 75. So it's 93%. Yeah. So is why that isn't those, that coming out? Is right? that one of the, that's one of those factors that was not being picked up by their calculation. When we put in that it was only 75% complete or 99% complete or 97 or 85 or 95, that factor was not being picked up by their calculation. But why did it come out lower? I don't have the answer right now off the top of my head. I certainly have made no efforts to change mine in any way from what was described. Me? Yep. Yeah. The 141 is about 75% of the 182. Yeah. Yeah. So the replacement cost new is 182. Yep. 75% of that is about 141. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Say again. This is a replacement cost new if it was built brand new and complete. Okay. 75 percent done. Mm -hmm. Which is about so 75 percent of this is 141. Wow. And my garage. It's actually 77 percent. Right. Well, my garage and shed are in there yeah. too. That's why it's 77. Which together right. are about seven thousand, eight thousand yeah. dollars. Well, you added another building that wasn't on there before. It was built in 2009 and just got added on. Foundation. It's an empty foundation. I don't know. You just added it. I'm just looking at reading what's been on here. Yeah, we poured it when we did the garage for the uh, basement and never done form and everything with the garage. Mm -hmm. Well, it's never been listed before and it was just listed this year. It well. was set off separately this that year, I believe. I don't show up. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I mean, so, okay. I, so that one's 75%. Now, certainly every time, every few years, either you guys came up or we certainly said, what's been going on at your house, Malcolm, lately? Anything new and different? Well. And at one point he said, yeah, well, I put in the hardwired or I had it insulated. <laughs> and I said, basically I'm just looking no. at this from 21 to 22. And you got 90% complete in 21, 75% complete in 22. 81% good, now it's down to 70% good. So who is evaluating that one? We were all working on it. They decided that in 21, 
we had it as a different, I think we had it as a different. Would you ever been there for What's two the years? Condition? What's the condition? The condition is fair to average. I'm going to step away for a few minutes. Right. And fair to average in 22. And the grade went up to B minus. B minus. The grade was C in 21. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just reading property cards. That's fine. And I'll hand my property for well, I already, already have handed them to the state uh, officer who's been over them. Well, we're not supposed to be, you're not supposed to be assessing your own, and Russ hasn't been there. So I just question what is, how does it change from 90% complete down to 75%? I have not made any changes to my property independent of the board vote. The, the property I cards are saying. Implication. I don't know. I'm just saying this is what the property cards are saying. I remember just something about both of you saying, well, you certainly hadn't seen it. At one point, my shed was valued as something, and that the shed certainly was not worth that much. And I don't know if we had a, probably had other conversations. I'm dealing with 1,200 different parcels, including my own. Yes. Well, Chris, what's it saying? Yeah, I mean, I. We haven't been up there, and I'm going to say it was at least five years. Okay, then it's time. I mean, I'm just reading what information is on there, and my question is, are these property cards up to date? We don't look at any property cards when we're putting up a value. We just go by the numbers here, and I guess, how can we do, do a fair assessment when we don't even look at the property cards and say, What's the difference? What's going on different? You see changes in it. Why? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's, I mean, I looked at property cards. I could pick out something wrong on almost every one of them pretty easily. Little things. I'm not saying everything's big, but there's little things that could be. Even the pictures on some of them, they weren't even accurate how they were drawn out. You want me to show you? Not right now. No. Uh, by all means, yes, I do absolutely want to see them. And no, we will grade has changed. Up in twenty two. And the value went down ten thousand. Fair. So the, this one's 21, this one's 22. Okay. Well, we'll have to go over it again. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking at the charts and trying to understand and well, read this them. Probably fresh eyes can be a real benefit. Did I do with my other uh, ones here? Well, does everything look correct on your 22? Just look at your property card. And just tell me what that says. Let me see what the story is. So why is it that the grade is changing? It was from a B minus to a C. Now I still don't understand why grades are changing. Grade is supposed to be that on its would have had to have been part of our analysis of log houses, and we decided we went back to the originals, right? I, I don't know. So. Yeah, when we changed all of them. Yes. Well, yours went up. 
You're I haven't changed it. I'm just saying. I haven't redone it you're, since I went back to the original. Well, your 2021 was C, now it's gone up to a B minus. So yours went up in the grade. I don't think it is anymore on average. I'm not saying it is. Right. But I'm just saying that changed. You're also looking at things from very different dates. I mean, this was back last November. Um, and we just decided several weeks ago to go back to our original grades on log houses and forget that analysis that we had done moving them up in partly in response to some of your concerns. Effective year went up. So this one went up. Some of the effective years have changed too. For why, I don't know. This one, the effective year in, in uh, 21 was 1998, which that's an odd year, but, and now it's gone up to 2015. Now why? But it's know. still very good, and it's still very good, Am and it's I? a B. No, I oh. no, okay, I was gonna say. So I mean, I just don't understand how effective things... age would be because of uh, condition or work done on it. Okay, let's see. Is in there anything written, work done on it? No, there's no place to enter these. Enter that right here. Isn't this where you enter it? No, this is only where you list the permits. This is just a listing of what permits have been pulled. Okay. Not what work has been done. But you haven't even been out to this house. So how would you know if the work's been done? You, what house is it? I mean, we often, we go by, we talk to people. I'm just looking at and saying, what is, how do, how are we even valuing these things when you don't look at the property cards and you don't see the different changes and you're just looking at a chart and saying, yep, let's let's go with that. Certainly can't get out and visit every house. I'm not saying that, but vacation. you could look at a property card and say, what's changed on it? If you don't go in the house, you can't very well say what's changed. On the property card, why is the property card changing oh, if you don't go to because it? Because there may be something from the exterior that leads us to believe, as the state has said in the past, if you're not allowed inside, you have to base your evaluation of the interior condition on the exterior condition. Okay. The philosophy being that one will keep the interior of one's house in at least as good condition as the exterior and probably a spot better. Well, I don't know about that. Whether that's the case or not, it, that's, they feel that's a reasonable philosophy. Okay, condition change, square footage up. Okay. I mean, I'm, I, I think that to, I think that we should. Yes. Should what? We've been talking about yes, getting a visiting schedule back up and going. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now that COVID's over, mm -hmm. we can. Uh, that has elapsed since Malcolm was unable to continue doing that. Okay. Let's we see finished that. about. Five years ago, but he certainly was not able to get inside all our houses. Oh, he never been over to my house. No one has been oh, in my house. Yes, he has. He went and took exterior photos. Oh, photos outside, but nobody's been in my house. Right, not from the beginning. And it's like, why would it be changed to in fifty years, forty-five years? Why wouldn't it be? Many people in that period would have re totally remodeled bathrooms, kitchens. Uh, change floorings and all kinds of different things. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Each person is individual. Each owner has their own choices. Okay. So this is my, my I think that thing about what I'm reading in the property cards. They don't totally make sense to me as to why things are changing. And we're, I think it's a bit, not a bad idea to get out the old card when we're changing something, write it on the old card. The date that we're changing it and why. I think that was supposed to be done anyways. If I was reading it on um, that course I took, it says you're supposed to mark why it's changed, the date it's changed, and that's supposed to be on the property card. 
which why it's changed usually they're usually referring to a box that uh, gets checked off but oh this system doesn't allow for that just allows us to list permits but we can certainly write it in on hand by hand on the printout mm -hmm. and that Oops, would excuse me solve having to answer these questions later on okay yeah so now There isn't time to do all of that in the next two weeks. No. But you didn't, you know, because of the date of the election and all, you've only been with us for two months and 10 days or something. Right. Yeah. So we're working along as we can. Um, we're going to have to go along, I think, with having our values up to market value. People are welcome to apply for abatement if they feel it's uh, indicated. And we will start in with a new uh, schedule of site visits. And we'll start in with a new method of changing anything by writing it down on the prior year's property record card. Okay. I mean, and I think that's a, a good thing to do. Well, I, you can't change it all in no a short of time, and I understand that, but I'm just trying to understand these charts and why are some of the not that one. Why are some of these total replacement values? Oops, sorry. And um, your replacement value, and they're being some are being assessed lower. And I understand it's, but this one's very good. Well, we, and this one is being assessed lower. Well, we've tried to answer that. Well, I didn't and get that answer, but I know it, it didn't make sense to you apparently. So I'd like to try that again another day because we are getting on. Yes. Um, we need to come to a final decision on your yep. fiscal 22 abatement. Yep. Well, we, and did you ever figure out how come it's going good and it was supposed to be average? No, they haven't got back to me with that, but I'm still, I am of the opinion that mm -hmm. Your property would sell for a great deal more that it's valued right now well below its full and fair market value. It's valued at 240,000. No, the house. I'm talking the house property. The house plus 4.1 acres of land and the outbuilding mm -hmm. is valued at $240,900. Yeah. We have had a number of other one and a third. Um, story houses sell, several of which were log houses. The prices range from 240000 even. Now yours is 1,157 square feet. This next one, the lowest one, is 560 square feet on 1.4565 acres with no outbuildings. It was a sale in November of 21. Yeah. And they range up to 397000 Oh, is that that chart you're looking at? Is that this no, one? No, oh. no, it's not a chart. It's something I wrote up today looking at the sales. Okay. And I found one, two, three, four, five, six sales that were one and a third. Three of them are logs, all within 19, uh, 2020 and 2021. Mm -hmm. And varying acreages. And I believe that if yours, that yours is being valued well below its um, present market value or its market value as of January 1 of this year. And so my choice, my personal vote is to deny further action on that application. Um, you, I'm sure, have your own thoughts on this. I hadn't given you this to look at at all. Because I just did it this afternoon after I got here. Right? So 
we'll just so so on your chart here it's saying it's uh the replacement value on my house is 127. i'm going back to mass appraisal of property as a whole against the sales of so then won't you have to go through every house by mass appraisal and look at them all because you know what no you're I let you leave me astray, Roxy. <laughs> In that, you started looking at it from the point of view of individual appraisal, the way a realtor does when you're applying for financing to, to, to take out a mortgage or something like that. They find five houses similar. They break it down to the characteristics and they say, okay, this much more for this, this much more. Mm -hmm. That's individual appraisal. That's not mass appraisal. Mm -hmm. And... I fall you down that rabbit hole, and I shouldn't have. I should have stuck to my guns, but you had an interesting way of looking at it. It's a way. It's a valid way for standard appraisal, or for individual appraisal, financing appraisal. But what we do is mass appraisal, mm -hmm. and therefore, we're looking at the value of the property against the market value of other similar properties. This brackets them, brackets yours within a grouping in that there's something higher, there's something lower. Six sales to compare to are a reasonable field. No one is a big outlier. Let's say possibly that highest price one over on Wilder Hill Road. And that could still be thrown out. The next highest would still be 334,000 compared to year 240. Um, that has and that's 1,211 the, square feet, five acres instead of year four, and it mm -hmm. has an outbuilding of e just about equal utility. So that's, that's my opinion. So I understand that, your opinion, I get that. Yep. But when you compare it to what other people are being assessed for, it's supposed to be fair to assessments to other people. That's what it says on the website and everything else. So when I look at other assessments that have not changed, I am high. I look at my neighbor's log home. You're Just looking at them individually. Yes. Well, you have to. When, when you think, why not? I think, I think sometimes I get the feeling that because you don't agree with what I've said that you just throw it away. No, no, I, I see what you're saying that I have to be up with fair market value. Yes, you do. Are you up to fair market value on your house? If your the house is what it, it is, are you at fair market value? If you put it on the market today, would you get, would you ask for more than that? For the entire property, including land in Ashfield? Sure. So then how can you assess it at 128? Well, I'm being land, assessed at 127. I pay land taxes in Ashfield on the land in Ashfield. Uh, as far as just the Conway property is concerned, I don't I'm talking about the house, the house. I'm being assessed at 127. My years. house on three point whatever acres. Mm -hmm. I don't believe we're bringing a great deal more than that. Last time I looked at 127, you're only going to get 128 for your house. You're looking at just the structure. You're not looking at the you land. Don't sell you just know. the structure. You sell I can't structure sell, I can't land. lift the house up and put it. Okay, so you've got three acres, I have four acres, whatever. Yeah. So one acre difference. And you're saying your house at. And mine's two? in chapter, my land is in chapter. Fine. But your house is twice the size of mine. Four bedrooms Not that sell, sells quite a bit more than two baths, four bedrooms. One bedroom yeah, has no closet, so as people says, say technically that's no bad, whatever. It's like that argument all the time. And you wouldn't get more than 128 for it. Do you think that's fair? I think that the value of my house is severely limited by its condition. And I, I have an idea. Go to that here. 
you don't believe her on the condition of her hospital value, take a visit. Vice versa. My family doesn't want. But vice versa. You two course. get an inside visit to her house. Well, mine's got the original floors, original cabinets, original everything. You'd be surprised what is not finished in my house. Same at you, right back at you. Yeah, and you want to charge me for fair market value. And you have never been in, and you're saying it's 100% complete, which hey. I'm finding as odd. Let's put our cards on the table. I'll see if my family agrees, and we will both well, have wait a full minute. interior visits of each other's houses. Um, and you said that you lowered this, and you got my exterior is good, condition is five. And the physical condition is good. So you're saying you lowered it to average. We spoke, I got it all in email. It's good. You never lowered it to average. We had to lower it to average to get to, to give you that abatement that we did. Well, then it went. That was 2021. Yeah, that was 2021, I think, Russ. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's. <clears throat> well, I, I just find that you, you're. Say mine has to be meet fair market value and others people's don't because I'm questioning it. When I compare my neighbor's house is too well, don't compare mine to anything. Well, okay. Until you have okay, I have my neighbor's Which house is 2004. The... 2004, it's built. Let's hold off there. Let's hold off there. And they're and average. We're not getting anywhere with this discussion now. We're just running around this. Same arguments over and over again. Well, if you're if you if you're saying they all have to be average, um, fair market value. How is Brogel's house, Roxy? Which is what you're you're bringing the same arguments up again? I think yes. And we've answered them or tried to. And and. I said, I sometimes feel that if you don't agree, you just kind of. Well, I don't agree with don't your, your, your assessments on um, conditions. Well, then after we've seen a few more houses, I'd like to have you draw up a list of what you feel would be qualifiers for different conditions and see how that compares with what we have or what we use. use. We have certain aspects of a property that we look at, you know, deferred maintenance, uh, especially, yeah, you know, in determining in determining the condition of a house. Mm -hmm. And I think that well, I get the I feeling would, you're not agreeing with it. Therefore, well, you just I'd went like into, to know you just went you into would. Mary Parker's house and you're putting in park her it's average. All fives. Mm -hmm. And what was the condition of her house? I felt it was average. There was no obvious deferred maintenance. Um, on the other hand, certain things had been done to, uh, they've been worked on in the kitchen. The laundry room itself has a newer room, as is the room in bath, the, uh, the downstairs bedroom. That's a newer room, so that offsets things a little bit. The sunroom is newer. The exterior uh, did not show. It showed a bit of bit of attention here and there needed. Um, roof's in good, of course, it's a metal roof, so it's relatively new. It's in good order. There and were no real indications of splashback here and there. So, and you got that marked as average. And it's valued at? And that's my problem. When you want to say mine is higher because it's got to be up to fair market value, when I look at other ones that are similar to mine, it's it's hard just to say, well, mine has to be up that high when other people's aren't. Well, we're going to be going out and getting the raw data. And we'll be using that. Well, I know, but why am I saying it? Because I put it in for an abatement for 2022. Yes, you did. And we brought the house way down. No, you well, didn't. We had the year before, we at any rate. Right. And now our last question on your 2022 abatement was on the outbuilding. 
that was the last of the questions. I feel that the value for that is appropriate the way it is. Oh, that on my outbuilding. Yep, you I know. Have, you have me assessed for a barn, a 1.5, a one story, which has a connecting and building. Your, the question is, should there be any Yes. Can, any adjustment made for common walls? Yes. There isn't for anybody else, whether they have any or not. How many of people have them connected that you're separating? Mary Parker. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just that you bring her name up fairly, fairly frequently. Well, yeah, I think, I think I'm, I'm um, beginning need to feel very tired. What else do we need to? Well, you gave your opinion. Um, yep. Russ has not. Would you like to speak to it now? Well, what are we speaking to? I mean, backing up. Uh, well, Lee's personal. Do you, th do you think your house is at fair market value? We're talking about the final assessment on your property for fiscal 22. That's the agenda right. item. And Lee's personal but vote was to deny any further Russ action making on a this decision. application. So I'll keep is your up. house at fair market value? My house? Yes. I believe so. 442000 for a $300,000 place in your condition? Excellent yeah. and luxury? It's not excellent and luxury. You know, we went into this last time we had the meeting that the grade of the house is not what other houses are. Why? I explained this to you that there are other houses in that area of town that have a balloon frame. For the property. What? I understand that you're talking about the balloon thing, which okay, construction. Right. So, yes. So that that changes the grade. Well, that's not what your property card says. No. Huh? Are we abating your property? No, but he is making a decision. So I want to know what he thinks of his property. He made the decision on his. I have Actually, nothing to no, do with didn't. mine. I mean, I. That would, have been made by that would have been made by Malcolm. And me. Right. So it's, is his a fair market value? For the structure, it's not that big. But it's, it's they certainly properly described. It's excellent. It's properly described in on the property card. Wait what does the property card say? Well, wait a minute. I, got it here I believe it said excellent and uh, yeah. Maybe. 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 Is, is that accurate on your property card? What year is that? I feel like I'm in court. 22. Well, okay. People are making the decision on my house, and I'm just asking them on theirs. It says great. A minus. Condition yeah. excellent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 97. A minus is very good to excellent. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and it's only valued at 40, what? Which is about as high as the values go in our system. Value Which is one under, of the reasons. Just under 500,000. Yes. Current building is 411. The structure that one, yeah, part of it alone, not without the land, no. not no. the land, no, right, the house. So, do you think you could get more for that from selling it? I don't think so. What are you kidding me? This no, house, are you now? Wait a minute, wait a minute. What all you have to do is go down the street and look at the neighborhood and look at the one that's just sold up here. Which one? On the Waitley Road. Yeah. For 585 or 580. Right. It had just been totally the renovated on is. the inside. And his is luxury inside. So it's a better neighborhood. Okay. And you told me you have a bathroom up over your garage. Yeah. You only have it listed for two bathrooms. In the house. In the house. Well, you're claiming that over the garage is living space with no, a bathroom. No, you're not. No, so it's not, it's not living space. Well, what is it when it has a bedroom and a bathroom? No yes, bathroom. No it's bedroom. Bedroom. so it just has a bathroom. It has, it has a office with a bathroom. With a bathroom. 
So don't we claim bathrooms when you're yes. done? So how come it only has two listed? There's another one listed in the valuation in the garage, I believe. No. That's or no, it wasn't done then. Oh, it was listed at the 22, yeah. It's got two, two bathrooms in a house. Well, I, this I, is I, all combined. I'm going to have to go. I'm quite sure it's covered. Where is it covered? In the value of the garage. Where's it covered? You're, you're paying 124 mm -hmm. per square foot. I'm at 110. I have 1,100 square foot house. Right. And it's at 110 per square foot. You're only at 124 per square foot. I've got other houses here in the same category as yours as far as luxury. And, and they're up to 161 a square foot. You're at 124. I'm just... Make a point of going all through the luxury houses and comparing them as a group. Look at this one. They're only paying 101 a square foot. I mean, it's a huge the square feet again on the house. As opposed to property against property. Now, we're not comparing property against property. We're doing it looking at square footage. Are you saying? I just don't see a good reason why mine is as high as it is. Except you can compare it to a house being sold and it's sold for a lot of money. And wow. if, you, if you compare to anybody else's here, you, you'd have to go through every one and say, well, is that one going to be sold for fair for what it's being assessed at? Find out when they sell. Give them all. So you find out when they sell? No. I'm being facetious now because I'm getting very tired. And well, how can you compare this house? Let's look at the luxury ones together as a group. Well, well how can you compare this house? And it was built in 2004. And it's three, five, condition, excellent. The outside is three, which is same as mine. The inside condition is five, which is the same as mine. And it is only valued at. It's bigger than yours. True. So it would sell for a higher price than mine. Yes. And we've talked about how. Cost per square foot slowly decreases as the area built increases. Yes, I, I understand that, but it's like yeah. we have a very uh, minimal house and it's being charged almost as much as a huge luxury house. It's, uh, I question. Who's making the decisions and what they are in mass appraisal? The more important way for us to look at it is to look at all the houses that are categorized as luxury because mm -hmm. they have the same types of amenities. Are well, they just, the same category? And you caliber? just said you looked at mine compared to what sold. That's what you're comparing mine to. Is what we're saying. Sold. That that isn't what I said. My house is um, like 863 square feet on a single floor, and it's valued at $187,000 by itself, just the house. And I'm not saying mm -hmm. anything. <laughs> Do you have anything else tonight? I feel that I cannot uh, accomplish any more tonight myself. Can we get any other? No, no, just any of well, the demo, the Patriot demo. Uh, but that was, I think I could, I think I can forward it to you each. I don't oh. believe that was protected. Oh, I don't think so. You can that send it as an email and I can I'll try watch it. it. Yeah, okay. I'll certainly try that. And then we can speak to it next week. Mm -hmm.
So, are we going to come to a final thing on my house, on my garage, on my property? Because my garage went up 13% and we haven't assessed that compared to everybody else's at 6.5. Why did that happen? Right now, I can't even remember where your garage started because it's been through so many iterations. Would you like to see? No, not really. At the moment, to tell you the <laughs> truth, Roxy, I don't know as I can look at it fairly. Uh, it started out as one thing, and then you said, well, let's look at it as a as a garage, or let's look at it as a, as a, as a barn, or let's look at it as a... And, and the patio area, you know, we've looked at as a, as a canopy over. We've looked at it as a porch. That's you know, a roof to porch. We looked at it. We've looked at it as so many yeah, different and things. Computer. It went from what? It, the rating, we put it in as average and it went up to good. Yes. And we still haven't got that straight. So how then, are we going to do this if we can't get it straight? I haven't been able. I only got back this afternoon. I haven't been able to talk to them today to see if they have straightened it out. I will talk to them tomorrow. But the grade changed. I don't know. That's what we're trying to figure out why and how to solve the reason of why it did and that it won't do it ever, you know, that we can make sure it won't do it again. Okay. So I'm looking at someone else's tall. barn here, one story barn. I'm, I'm being assessed at 1696 a square foot. Overall? No, this is just on the small one. Your one day, one style barn, which is connected. Oh, okay, you know. where your studio is. Yes. All right. And you're assessing me at 1696. Yes. Oh, Barsha, what the hell is his name? He's, got a, he's got a one story barn. He's assessed at 1050. And his is the same grade. Actually, my grade is less than his. Does he have electricity? my head, I don't know. Yeah. Right. Well, it doesn't say on property cards. No, it says it in the background. That it have electricity or water. It's, it's, it says so in the general description of that property where we have to compare our notes to the description. And that's how we know which one we can choose that best mm -hmm. um, reflects that property. Well, I'm not going to make a decision until we find out right. from Taylor why things are changing. Yep. Well, and then I, I want to know why mine is assessed more than someone else's. Same, same style, same everything. And I'm a C and grade seven, they're a C, grade six. And there's 1050 and I'm 1696. Is yeah. there any other different answers? Yep, again, maybe they don't have electricity. Well, no, you have a studio on yours. That well, that's what the one story barn is. Yeah. yeah. But you have electricity and you have water. Maybe they don't. Well, you don't know that either. Oh, so I'm just saying I, that's I've a already very heard good reason. I've heard that already. It's time to call it for the night. I wouldn't need you next Wednesday. Yes. Okay. Please. Uh, 718.